So the first thing you want to do is print out the pattern pieces for the cowl. There should be five sheets labeled cowl one through five. So the first patterns you want to cut out are going to be on sheets labeled cowl four and cowl five. Once you cut these two pieces out, you'll use the lines and the X's to tape them together. When cutting out the top half of C1, remember to cut on the outline line and not on the line with the X's. You're gonna use this line with the X's to line up and tape these two pieces together. Also, don't forget to cut out the triangles on the edges here, as you'll be using these for registry marks when you're putting the pieces together. So here's the right side cut out. You'll notice on your pattern, there's a square, a line, and a note to cut at a 45 degree angle. This arrow is to note the angle of which you want to cut this. With the arrow pointing in, that means you'll want to cut this way in as opposed to making your cut out. Also that line notes where you want to stop your 45 degree cut. This square here is to represent this whole entire line here and the rest of the pattern should be cut at a straight angle. So it may be tough to tell here, but this right here is cut at a 45 degree angle and the rest of this is cut at a straight line. Here's a closer look at the 45 degree edge I'm talking about. It's being cut in at a 45 degree angle as opposed to being cut out at a 45 degree angle. The next pattern piece you want to cut out is C2. Here is the finished piece cut out. You'll notice on the pattern, similar to pattern piece C1, you have a line, a square, and note stating which way to cut 45 degree angles. So from here to here, it's just a straight edge. For this outside edge, you want to cut an inward 45 degree angle. From this line to here, you want to cut this one at a 45 degree angle inward. So if you look closely on the piece here, you see from here to here, it's inward, but here, it's straight up and down. This edge here is cut inward. Here is C1 and C2 glued together. The next step is to cut out your pattern for C3. There's two pieces to it. You'll tape them together like so. Use it to create your pattern piece. And as noted on the pattern piece, this one edge right here is cut at a 45 degree angle, angled inward. Now I will glue C3 to the back of C1. Here's C3 glued into place. The next pieces to work on are C6 and C4. Cut out the two pieces that make up C4 and tape them together. Same thing for C6. As with some of the previous patterns, you'll see you'll be cutting at 45 degree angles on the inside and to the outside. For a close up look here, here is C6 and you'll see that this edge was cut to the outside and this edge right here was cut to the inside. Cutting out C4 is just straight cuts. Now the next thing I'll do before gluing C6 to C4 is I will heat form this and curve this outward. Here's C6 all curved up. Now I'll glue C6 and C4 together. Here we have them glued together. Now we'll take this piece and glue it to the inside here of the cowl. When gluing the two pieces together, you'll notice there's a slight apex right here. That point will line up right here when you're gluing the pieces together. And here we have it glued together. Now the first thing that I do when I glue these sides together is I run two layers of glue along the whole entire seam all the way through here. And then I carefully work my way attaching it up to this point. This mark right here from the pattern piece is to let you know that's where these two pieces stop lining up 
and you skip past the ear over here. So once this is all glued into place, then I come to the back and work my way from here all the way up to this edge with another mark from the pattern piece to know where I need to stop. Next, you'll want to cut out patterns C5 and C7. Again, be mindful of the bevel cuts you want to make and at what angle they need to be made. You see this edge here is angled outward and this edge here is angled inward. This piece here, the cut on this edge is angled inward. Now I will glue them together. Now I have the two pieces glued together. I also did some heat forming to the piece to give it a bit of a curve here as you can see. The next step is to glue it into place right in here. Now in doing this, you want to start from this edge first and work your way around using the registry marks as a gauge. But once you get to this point here, this piece right here runs a little long, so you want to stretch this edge out some while compressing this edge to get this all to line up and end right there. Here it is all glued into place. You see I started the edge right here and I stopped the other edge right here. Next, you want to cut out pattern C10 for the inside ear. This is made out of two millimeter foam. For the rest of this project, I've been using three millimeter foam, but for this piece, I'm using two millimeter foam. Now I will glue it into place right here. Here it is glued into place. You'll notice I didn't glue it at the edge here. This will be glued in later. Now that I have this side pretty much finished, and I've already finished up the other side, now it's time to glue them down the center. Here we have both sides glued together. When doing this, I would recommend starting by putting it together at the front, like so, working your way up. Once you get to a point to where you can't reach any further with your hands this way, then come out and carefully work your way through up into here. Then, since it is still open on the insides here, you can come in and continue your work through here, bringing the seams together in between the ears. Once you reach a point you can't reach any further, then you can come back out, work your way down a little bit, and then turn it around and slowly bring it together this way. That way I find is one of the easiest way to put the two sides together. Now we'll work on making the nose. Here are the nose pieces cut out, pattern C8 and C9. Again be mindful of your 45 degree cuts. This one angling out, this one angling in, this one being a mirror of that one. and on the bridge of the nose. Now I'll glue them together. Here is the nose all glued together. You'll notice the nose bridge is a little short. That's okay, that's part of the design. So to start off gluing this to the headpiece, I added a few layers of glue here, a few layers of glue on the side here, but I didn't worry about putting anything up on the top of the nose right there just in the center. Now for the headpiece, I added a few layers of glue right here, but not here and not here yet. So the first thing I'll do is I'll attach the bridge of the nose right here, and then I'll add glue to attach the sides later. So here's the bridge of the nose glued into place. The reason why before putting this guy in, I added glue on this side was because this is going to be tougher to lay down glue once it's already in place 
And the reason why I did not put glue on here before putting it into place is because if these two edges touched while I was trying to line this one up, it would make it a really big challenge to get these pieces apart and lined up correctly later. So I've got that glue already in there ready to go, no problem. Now I'll come back, put the glue in here, and attach them together. They should line up square, like so. As for up in here, the top of the nose just floats freely on the inside of the cowl. Here we have the nose all in place. You'll notice, as I was stating earlier, it's free right here. It's not glued there. It just rests up against itself there. Same thing on this side. It is attached here, it is attached here, and will hold in place just fine as is. Now the next thing is, before adding the back piece here and painting the whole piece, is trying it on and seeing what adjustments need to be made for a good fit. So I did a quick fit test of this guy, and it's a little bit large for my head. I'm about 23 and a half inches around my head, and this guy is a little loose. So what I'm going to do is take some pieces of scrap six millimeter foam. These are about four inches by five inches. I heat curved them, and I'm going to glue them into the back of the cowl so it gives a snugger fit. During the test fit, I also figured out what the coverage area underneath the chin was like and cut back excess on both sides of the foam of roughly about two to three inches on each side. And then I measured that difference and put in a piece of elastic in between here. Also, before I add the foam filler in the back, I took small pieces of two millimeter foam and reinforced all the seams on the insides. Keep in mind the thickness of the foam you use when making your cow will affect how snug it fits. So for example, this guy is made almost completely out of three millimeter foam and is slightly loose on my head. Now if I made this out of six millimeter foam, it would be a little bit snugger fit. And I know this because this is one of my first test pieces that I did out of six millimeter foam. So if you go any thicker, keep that in mind. Now, if you have a larger head that's maybe around 24 or even larger, what you'll wanna do is take the pattern piece you use to make this piece with, like I have here, which is piece C4, split it down the middle, like so, and then add an additional piece in the middle here. Now, when you do it, you wanna make sure that you're only spreading it out on the back side of the cowl and you have the front end still attached up front here. Back here, you have flexibility as to how wide it goes, but if you spread it out here, your front pieces aren't going to line up. So for example, if you wanna add about an inch to the diameter of your cowl, you want to add half an inch to this pattern in the back here. Since you use this pattern piece twice for the left and the right side, that half inch doubles into one whole inch. So once you have your cowl assembled and fitted, it's time to paint it up. You see here, I just painted this guy up a simple black. For my paint job, I did three light coats of Plasti Dip. Now you'll notice here, on this side I have the cutout. There's still a hole here, and on this side there is no cutout. This is just to show you what it looks like if you don't do the cutout and what it'll look like if you do add the cutout detail here. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to take a piece of scrap foam, two millimeters, get it to fit inside here. And before I glue it into place, I'm going to take a piece of this black fabric, glue it over the foam here, and then glue that into the back side. Now for the fabric that I use here, it is the carbon fiber black. Uh, from Yaya Han's line of fabrics at Joann's. So if you're looking for this particular design, this carbon fiber looking design, that is the one that I'm using. So now I will do two layers of glue on here, one or two layers of glue here, 
glue them together and then glue this into place on the inside like so. Now that I have it glued into place, it is ready to try on. So if this is your first time wearing something like this and you want to go all out, I would recommend picking up a balaclava like this. It's just basically a black hood that you wear. You can put it over before putting on your cowl and that'll help cover up any sort of gaps between your costume, the rest of your costume and where the mask ends. For the eye makeup which is something I almost always do if I'm going to some sort of convention, is I will do black cake makeup. This right here is a uh, Meron brand. I don't know. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it properly, but this is what I have. This stuff works great. All you do is you add a little bit of water to it, and then you use like a latex sponge like this to put it on. Um, also, sometimes I will use black eyeliner makeup to get that last little bit that you really can't get with the cake makeup. This stuff works well to get, get, your, uh, get the edges of your eyes. Now, oftentimes in these costumes, they can get pretty warm and you can sweat quite a bit. To minimize the smearing of this underneath, when you're taking the mask on and off or if you're sweating and you don't want it to run, you want to do some sort of sealer on it too, which will help minimize or completely stop depending on how much you're sweating. As for cleaning off, I wouldn't recommend using just straight soap and water. I would use some sort of makeup remover that's specifically designed to take makeup off. Use something like this with uh, uh, some sort of cotton swabs or some sort of towel that's going to be gentle on your face. Wipe off the makeup first with your makeup remover and then wash your face. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for checking out this tutorial. Click on the left to get the patterns or click on the right to see more tutorials.